Rock, the designer of Adapt. Today I want to show you what you get in and how to play Adapt. Adapt is a uniquely themed card and dice game for two to three players. In the game Adapt, you choose a starting guppy fish, you will adapt parts to that fish and upgrade its body creating what we call a master fish. Over the course of time, you'll generate additional stats, additional health, additional attack values, and all sorts of special abilities in an effort to battle to the death in order to become the last master fish in the sea. Let's take a look at what you get. Inside of every copy of the game Adapt, you receive over 60 unique cards three player mats. The player mats are not required for playing, but they are very helpful, so we threw them in there. Three player aid cards, and a 21 unique dice across three sets, okay? We call them Havsies dice. Havsies dice are beautiful dice that are designed with a half and a half design. Each die is pearlescent, semi-translucent, and has vibrant colors with easy to read numbers on there. Each set of dice is color coded to match your three guppies, your blue, your green, and your red. And of course the rules manual. Let's take a closer look at each card and how the cards are set up. Each card has a number of stats on it, which your player aid cards will guide you through letting you know what each one is. Let's go through each one together. The sea bass is a level one body. You may also have a clownfish for your level one body. From there you can upgrade to a lionfish or a anglerfish for your level two body. A flying fish or blue marlin for your level three body. A great white shark or swordfish for your level 4 body, and there's more at each level, but I'm just showing you two of each. And a sailfish or a dolphin as your maximum level 5 body. In addition to the bodies, you will also adapt parts. First, let's put these bodies right on our player mat, assuming that we've just adapted it. Okay, they would go in the center. You see we also have specials, dorsals, horns, mouths, special skin, side fins, organs, and tails that we can also adapt to our sea bass, or to our lionfish, or to our great white shark, or to our sailfish, or to our orca. All of these that we can adapt to the body, modifying the body's parts. Let's take a look at those parts. Again, just showing you a handful of parts you can adapt. You can adapt the puffer fish skin. Imagine that on your great white shark. The enhanced brain, which gives you a bonus experience count. Upgrade your brain, replace it with an upgraded heart for each master fish can only have one of each location at a time. You'll notice that the heart and the brain both have a gold indicator in the bottom left corner that shows us that it's going to match up with the gold indicator in the bottom left corner where organs go. Okay? The tails, of course, have a golden indicator on the far left side, right where the tail would go. Dorsal fins go up top, mouths go in the front, and then the specials, the horns, and the skin go in the corners. So we have a thresher shark tail, gives you the bonus ability of stunning, which thresher sharks are able to do. Great white shark, which gives you huge offensive bonuses. Again, I'll explain those symbols in a minute. More organs, the special bioelectricity of an eel on your miscellaneous fish. Echolocation of a dolphin, a sawtooth, sawtooth shark horn. Anglerfish horn, anglerfish mouth, sailfish dorsal fin, great white shark dorsal fin, lying fish side fins, flying fish side fins, all sorts of parts that you're going to adapt onto your fish. Now let's take a look at each individual stat. Just a quick look at the player aid over here it tells you that's the experience, the level attack die, location indicators, health, survival, lethality, ferocity, and bonus. Three of these come in every uh, game so you never have to try to remember. Um, and of course uh, symbols like this will be found inside of the game manual as well.
The three amazing guppies that you start with, they're level zero, so they cost no experience, uh, therefore they have very terrible stats. Um, but they have the special ability to adapt faster than the other bodies. They get a bonus where they can uh, level up a little bit faster than the other bodies. But eventually, you get rid of these bodies, replacing them with the sea bass and the sailfish and all that glorious stuff. All right, so you use that bonus um, while you can to take an early jump at the beginning of the game. So we have two level two fish side by side here, so we can not only see stats, but a little bit about how different bodies and parts compare at the same time. These are two level two bodies okay so you notice that they have no gold outline on them that's because they go right in the center as a full body okay up here in the top right we have the experience point cost since they're the same level they both cost six and of course the name of the uh, animal or part we have the level indicator the number of golden waves counting up is the level of the part or body that's one through five over here we have a die indicator. This is a late stage prototype. This will be updated in the copy that you receive from your uh, Kickstarter, from the local retailer, or from our website. All right, they have four major stats down at the bottom. On the bottom left, we have health for the heart. We have survival, symbolized by their tail swimming away for safety. We have a horn symbol indicating lethality which is a bonus that goes on top of ferocity if we can manage to pull off a successful attack. Ferocity is effectively our attack skill. Survival is our dodging skill. If we get hit, we take damage. We have so many health. And then lethality is a special bonus that usually only comes on other parts. Let's take a quick look at the two level five side by side. So let's jump in from level two to level five. Okay, so here we have two level fives side by side, the sailfish and the dolphin. You'll notice that the dolphin down here has a special ability called ram. This is another section that will occur sometimes. It's a special ability that they can use. Um, most of them are active abilities. We'll talk about that in a bit. And some of them are passive that just give you a bonus all the time. Since they're level five, they cost 15 experience. All of their bars are full. They've got way more hit points, way more health. This one even has a special ability. Every card is very unique and special. There are no wasted cards in the deck. You're gonna love every one of them because you're gonna need every one of them. Them. One final card comparison here, we have that level 2 lionfish with a level 4 great white shark. Yes, the great white shark's only level 4 because the killer whale or orca is level 5. All right. Now some fish specialize in hit points and offense, while others do not specialize in offense or hit points, but survive um, the game by having a high survival score. This is a level two fish that has a higher survival score than the level four fish because it happens to be its specialty. Even the lower level bodies are always useful. Uh, you do not need a level five body to win the game. Most games end between three and five. Probably most um, fish are about level four. And of course, if you have a level five, it's not gonna hurt. Okay, let's talk about setting up the game. To set up the game, you're gonna set up your optional player mats, and you're gonna, each player's gonna choose a guppy and put it as their starting body. They're all, this, all the, as I said, all the guppies are the same, so it doesn't matter which one you choose, it's just a color preference. You'll take your color-coded dice, all right? And each player will take their experience die, and they'll set it to one. Okay, I like to set up my dice alongside my player mat in the shape of a fish as in ascending order because um, I'm going to be needing these in ascending order once the battle starts. All right, then we deal out the gene stream. The deck is designed to flip down and slide into place. There are three slots in the gene stream in the two player game, and there's one additional slot per player um, up to a certain max. Okay, so we have three slots in the gene stream, and then down here we're going to have our discard pile where it's going to go eventually. Okay, as cards flow down the gene stream, we have the opportunity to buy from there. The currency, if you want to use that phrase of the game, is experience points. With each turn, we gain experience, but we haven't started it yet. To start the game, each guppy adapts by random selection. We're going to take our percentile dice and roll them 
all right, and consult the result against the chart in the manual. I rolled a 85, which is going to be the third slot card. So I gain the Thresher Shark Tail. The Thresher Shark Tail is a full on level five tail. Each body can only equip parts that are its level lower or up to two higher. A guppy is level zero, so it can equip level, there are no level zero parts. It can equip level one parts or level two parts. Since I can't adapt this yet, it's going to go into what is called my personal gene pool. My personal gene pool has one, two, three slots in it. One, two, three slots over here for the personal gene pool. All right, um, then since one card has been removed from the gene stream, the gene stream always cycles. Now I roll. Looks like I rolled a 61, all right? 61 is going to be the middle card here, so I'm going to take the angler fish mouth. The angler fish mouth is level two. Can I equip it? Yes, I can. So I'm immediately going to adapt that card. So that's going to go right on me. I automatically am now a green guppy with the mouth of an angler fish. The fun and insanity has already begun. I love building these fish. It is so fun and ridiculous every time. All right. So then the gene stream cycles, so it's always full. The player who rolls higher gets to go first, all right? At the beginning of my turn, I take my experience point die. Just for surviving this long in these waters, I'm going to add three experience to my fish at the beginning of every turn. You are always moving forward. You will never take backward progress in this game. You might have a stat go backwards. Example, uh, you may lose a few health points if you adapt a new body, you might go from a high hit point body to a high survival body. You'll always trade up though. All right. So you're always moving forward. So I have four hit points now and it's the beginning of my turn. I see a sea bass body sitting right here waiting for me. It's cost three experience. There's no way I'm not buying a level one body right now because I can. So my experience size is going to go back down to one. And since I can adapt that body, I immediately will. If I had enough experience to buy a higher level item, okay, or part, I would put it in here until I was able to adapt it. All right. At the end of every turn, the gene stream cycles and now becomes the next player's turn. They gain their experience, so they're now up to four. All right. And I have options here. I have a level one angler fish horn, an enhanced brain that I really wish I could afford, but I'm too experience shy, an echolocation that everybody wants, but it's level five, it's 10 experience. It's gonna take a couple turns before I'm able to buy those. The game starts small and you together build up towards it. That's how the basics of a turn go. Now let's talk about your individual options within each turn. Okay, speeding along here, we've jumped ahead to a later part in the game, so we can show you the different options that are um, that can all be displayed from this current setup. First, you'll see that we've each adapted a large number of parts. Okay, we're each keeping track of the amount of damage that we have on us by any unused dice that we have. We can use to keep track of the damage on us, and each of us has a attack die associated with our body for when we make our offensive maneuvers. We'll talk about attacking in a moment. Okay. The first option that you have on each turn and that you're going to do at the beginning and I showed at the very beginning is buying new parts and bodies from the gene stream. You're going to use your experience points to buy new bodies and parts and that is how you are going to upgrade your fish. So as I showed earlier, I'll spend a certain number of experience points. I'm going to buy this poison sack because he's already poisoned me and I'm going to return the favor. Okay, so that's eight experience. I adjust my die. Since I am high enough level to adapt it immediately, I will. If I cannot adapt it immediately because my body is not high enough level, again, it's the center of the fish, um, it will go into my gene stream to hold on for later. Okay? But let's take that back. That's option number one. Instead of buying this turn, I'm going to use my other option. That is to adapt. Now, if you buy and you can afford it, you adapt it immediately. 
As you saw earlier, I bought it, but I could not yet adapt it. This turn, I've been saving this Thresher Shark Tail at level 5 until I was a level 3 or 4 body. I'm finally a level 3 Blue Marlin. Guess what? Level 3 plus 2 equals 5. I can adapt my Thresher Shark Tail. It's going to give me more health. It's going to remove my survival, but it's going to give me, uh, it's going to remove one survival. It's going to give me a new ability stun, and it's going to give me that um, precious lethality that, again, we'll talk about with attacking right now. All right? So I took my turn. At the end of the turn, again, we cycle the gene stream and the next card to show up. Okay? At the end of every turn, regardless of what has occurred, the gene stream must be cycled at least one card. Okay, on this side, I'm now going to show you how to attack. All right, so I'm going to take my fish. I have my blue marlin body here. Again, it's my hit points, my survival of six, my lethal ferocity of three, and my attack die of a d8 which I'm going to pull up right here and roll for you okay so I've got my d8 and I'm gonna roll the d8 all right and I have rolled a 5 to that 5 I'm going to add my ferocity of 3 so my total is 8 right not entirely over here on my sailfish dorsal fin I have plus 1 ferocity and on my great white shark mouth, I've made a kill build here, okay? I have a two ferocity. And on my sawtooth shark, I have another one ferocity. So that total is the five I rolled, plus three is eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 is my total attack. And I have to compare that against my foe's total survival. My foe's survival is 7, plus his bonuses from his other parts is 8, 9. So the difference between the 12 total ferocity and the 9 total survival is 3. So I'm going to take 3 damage and I adjust it from my 9 that I had up to my 12. All right, and I'm going to compare that to my total health. All right, my total health is currently eight plus one is nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So I have one hit point left. I'm very close to dead, but I'm not dead yet. There's always a comeback mechanic by upgrading things or replacing parts that have a low health score with a higher health score. So there are three ways that your attack can go down. Number one, if you're total ferocity is greater than their survival, then you are going to deal damage equal to that amount. In addition, it, when you we call it a successful hit, you will also deal a bonus amount of damage equal to your lethality, that precious lethality that we got from our Thresher Shark Tail earlier, up to a max bonus of four. So in addition to that three that I had dealt, I will deal one, two, three, four, five more from my kill build that I have over here that would kill him. But that's not over yet. Option number two, your total ferocity is less than their total survival. In this event, you have missed, but we're going to again find out what the difference is. The difference that I have failed by, I will gain in experience. If I haven't hit you, I've learned something about how to get you better next time. I am always moving forward in the course of the game. Option number three, the total ferocity is exactly equal to the total survival. In this event, I'm going to deal one damage plus my lethality bonus, and I am going to gain plus to experience. I've learned just enough from just barely hitting them. Always moving forward. Now let's talk about why, even though I've dealt so much damage, way more than your health, you might still be alive. Your fourth action option on your turn is special actions. These are the things that occur in the bonus area on your cards. Some are defensive 
passive bonuses. Some are offensive passive bonuses. Let's take a look at some of these. Here we have counter attack on my angler fish mouth and counter poison on my puffer fish skin. That means that when you successfully attacked me, you are taking one counter attack damage and you have a chance of being poisoned. The one counter attack damage is automatic. I've got bad news for you. I have bioelectricity which causes shock, which is a very powerful form of extra counter attack damage that will stack beyond the normal limits and also affects my offensive maneuver. Shock's very powerful. So you're taking two automatic damage just for attacking me. At that point, you might decide that you don't even want to yet. Maybe that attack wasn't going to happen. But you say, you know what, I can take it and I'm going to adjust my damage from 8. I'm going to upgrade my damage die to say 10. I've taken 10 damage. Counter poison. That means that there is a 10% chance that you are going to end up poisoned again for t attacking me. So I'm going to roll either one of my d10s. Let's get those in focus. So either one of my d10s, I'll choose the one with a single one on it. If I roll a 1, you're also poisoned. I rolled a six, okay, you're not poisoned. All right, let's take a look at this though. This is the one that we would actually need to resolve first. The great white shark. Has anybody ever seen one of these sticking out of the water and been happy about it? I don't think so. What we have here is fear one. That means that there's a 10% chance that you couldn't attack me in the first place. Now when there's fear, it's resolved before all of the other effects. It's going to be resolved before the, uh, um, the attack is rolled, before counter damage, before counter poison, before any of those special effects come into play. All right, so fear one. I'm gonna roll that um, d10 and I rolled myself, good for me, I rolled a one. That means that you, Mr. Kill Build have not had the ability to attack me. That whole thing never happened. So I'm going to reset my attack die back down to where it was. And I'm no longer dead. Woohoo! Those are special actions that are passive. On my turn, instead of the passive actions, I may have an offensive action. Right here, I'll show you this one, it comes on the clownfish. The clownfish has a special action of hide, okay? That allows him to have a chance of hiding. It's more powerful than fear because it's got a higher chance. It's got a 2 in 10 chance of being successful, and there are a lot of other cards that stack with hide, increasing that bonus very high. It's a more powerful, but it's active. It's going to take my turn. I'm going to say I'm going to hide this turn. Other special actions that you can use actively on your turn it, uh, include the angler fish's ability to bait, the flying fish gives you the ability to jump out of the water where you can't even declare an attack against that entity, the dolphin and other parts include ramming so that you can use a different type of attack that does not require rolling and does automatic damage, but of course the damage total is lower. Uh, in trade for the reliability. There are tons of different uh, special actions that you can use on your turn. Now the last thing that we can do on our turn is what we call wipe the gene stream. Let's talk about that. Wiping the gene stream is a really unique action that needs to be used wisely because there are a lot of pros and cons. Basics. When I decide to wipe the gene stream, I'm going to take one, two, three cards from the gene stream, the entire gene stream, and I'm going to dump them all down here in the discard pile. I'm then going to replace the gene stream with three new cards. That is my action. It is the end of the turn. The gene stream has already cycled, and therefore it does not need to cycle further. It becomes the next player's turn. Cons first. Now the obvious con is it's now this player's turn, so he has first crack at these three new parts that have shown up. If he wants that level 5 echolocation, he can have it. He's going to get the first shot at it. Let's talk about the pros. Now the reason why I would do that in this situation is because there's also a level 5 heart that he could choose instead, which would cause regeneration, which would slowly counter out my poison damage. I'm wiping the gene stream. Honestly, my friends, I don't care what shows up. You can have anything else. I just hope it's not the orca body. So I flip out those next three cards. The other pro to the cycling of the gene stream is that you get a bonus experience. Since the other player has 
first cracks at it, we are going to get bonus experience that's going to add on to our dice for our next turn. All right. The other pro is a universal pro for all players is that it cycles the gene stream faster, speeding up the game, trying to get to those bodies and parts that we're both looking for. And every time I cycle the gene stream and moving the game forward to try to get those new bodies and parts, I'm going to get extra experience so that I'll be able to afford them when they show up. Getting down to the end of the game. As soon as you take more damage than you have total health, you are eliminated from the game, and therefore winning is simple. The last remaining master fish wins. And that, my friends, is Adapt. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you decide that Adapt is the right game for you and for your family and for your gaming group, and decide to pick it up directly from Gatekeeper Games or from your local retailer. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your support. Have a wonderful day. A few unique features that may not be immediately apparent. Unique theme. There are incredibly few fish themed games on the market. This could have been designed with adventurers donning equipment, but mutating fish tells a much more exciting story using these mechanics. Replayability. Every card in the game is unique. Each time you play, you are randomly dealt options, but strategically choose which to buy. This guarantees each player will be adapting their strategy each and every game. There is no do this every time and you win mechanic. Balanced designs. Adapt is specifically designed to share one deck, so all players have the same chances of winning every time. Fairness. Unlike many three or more player games, in Adapt it usually does not behoove you to gang up on a single player. The host of special abilities, not the least of which include armored scales, poison, and counterattacks, discourage focusing fire. RPG style dice. The Havsies dice included in Adapt all have standard numbering and are complete sets of seven dice, and therefore can be used for any other gaming purpose. These are just some of the unique effects that you'll find included inside of Adapt. And that's how you play Adapt.